Let's take a look at how CA Unified Infrastructure Management, or UIM, collects and transfers performance data, as well as makes it available to the Unified Portal Interface, dashboards, and reports for usage. To begin, the data collector managers, called robots, and data collectors, called probes, are provisioned to devices so they can collect, store, and transfer performance and availability data, via a message bus, to the data aggregators. These are special robots called hubs, that store some of the data in the information store, or NIS, and then send it onto the UIM portal, and reports environment. Now let's take a closer look at the UIM components that collect, and transfer performance data, and make it available for notifications, viewing and reporting. At the core of UIM is the data collector or probe, similar to an agent in other monitoring environments, that really does the work of collecting, queuing, and transferring data. It is software code that is assigned to gather specific information about a specific component in the infrastructure. Each probe has a specific job that is responsible for collecting specific data. For example, in the category of application probes, there is a Salesforce probe, pre-built and configured, to gather specific information about SFTC. It can be installed on the SFTC system itself, or it can be installed on a remote system and configured to monitor it from there. UIM consists of over 140 probes in about 15 different categories that are pre-built and configured to proactively monitor and manage infrastructure components and overall quality of service. These probes cover about 80% of most needs. Custom probes can also be created to monitor and manage specific performance issues not addressed by the out-of-the-box probes. Probes are used to collect performance and availability data about the infrastructure underlying the services and applications running within the infrastructure, as well as about the UIM environment itself. The probes used for reporting the UIM environment are in the categories of Admin Console, Service, Infrastructure, and UMP. The probes used to collect data about a customer's technical infrastructure are in these categories. Additionally, here are some other relevant facts about probes. They are pre-built and configured, and can be installed out of the box. They can be provisioned in different ways. Singly through simple drag and drop, packaged together in bulk, mass distribution based on profile, and on the device it's monitoring, or on a remote device. Probes can be turned on and off based on timing, and can be customized, both existing and new ones. A probe cannot stand alone. Ever. It is always assigned to a robot. Why? Because something needs to collect and forward the data a probe gathers, and in general, manage the probes. Robots are a small piece of software installed on devices that are monitored to manage probes. Specifically, to start and stop its probes at the required times, and to collect, queue and forward the monitoring data. All robots are basically identical. It is the collection of probes they manage that distinguish them. For example, a robot may be assigned to each router, and another robot may be assigned to back-end servers and databases. Robots use probes to manage their primary tasks. For example, every robot always has three service probes that manage its primary tasks. Control the probes attached to the robot, which includes starting and stopping them at the required times, using the robot's controller probe. Collect, queue and forward the probe messages using the spooler probe, and provide a simple database service for its probes. This allows the robot to store data for threshold monitoring and data trending, and ensures collected data survives power outages using the HDB probe. You may be wondering where the robots send their data. Well, it's another robot. A special robot called a hub. A hub is a robot that has additional responsibilities. Just as a robot manages its probes, the hub manages its robots. Every UIM deployment has one or more hubs. All hubs perform these tasks. Collect all messages coming from the robots. Quickly dispatch the messages to connected subscribers and or queues. Maintain system information, such as name tables. There are different types of hubs depending upon their purpose. The primary hub communicates with the NIS database. 
Every deployment has one, and only one, primary hub. This hub is created when you install the UIM server software. Secondary hubs can be used to group robots according to function, geographical location, departmental code, or other criteria. Although secondary hubs are optional, almost all deployments have them. Secondary hubs are created after the UIM server software is installed. They can be created or removed as needed to meet the needs of an IT environment. A failover hub is a secondary hub that performs the primary hub's actions if the primary hub is unavailable. Tunnel hubs use VPN-like connections to communicate through firewalls. A relay hub is installed in an IT mass deployment. It communicates with the UIM service. So how is data passed to the primary hub? It takes a bus. The UIM message bus. The message bus provides a set of services to the hubs, robots, database and management consoles. The message flow on the bus is managed using routing and naming schemes. The message flow is based on request response and publish subscribe models. Request response is the standard way of communicating over the network. A client issues a request to a server and the server responds to the request. Publish subscribe allows clients to send data, such as alerts, performance data, or messages targeted for gateway servers, without a designated receiver. It also allows clients to select messages based on subject. Finally, all of the UIM software components are grouped together into a logical set called a domain. The domain is created when you install the UIM server software. A site is normally set up with one domain, and then various security aspects, such as user profiles, permissions and access rights are distributed within the domain. For more detailed information about CA Unified Infrastructure Management, refer to the documentation wiki, or visit the UIM community to join in the discussion. The links can also be found in the YouTube description located below this video.